Hi designers, this is Kali. So happy to meet you all with a very new topic, interesting topic. I know this is not new, but it's uh, it's the struggle that we all designers are facing nowadays. Not nowadays, like when I'm starting as a new UX designer, as a newbie. So it was really tough for me to handle all the presentations. So I'll collect all the data. I didn't know whether the data is eligible to present it in the bibliography because I have collected mostly in the online. So uh, the first secondary data. So secondary data I'll collect mostly in online. I won't go directly to the field. We can't do that, right? But in the user interviews, in the primary research part, we do all the user research. We'll go uh, directly to the users. We'll collect it. So in that cases, I need to read a lot of books uh, to understand books or articles to understand whether uh, the data that I'm collecting is correct and uh, has the proper information because we should not mislead anyone uh, who's reading our uh, research paper or uh, portfolio or anything. Okay, in the primary research, you will be connecting directly with the end user to collect the qualitative data. Uh, there is a different between qualitative and quantitative now. So qualitative is something uh, you will get directly from the users. So it should have the proper number. It won't be in a percentage anymore. It should have a proper number, should have proper detail and who said it, what they said and how they said it, in which manner they said. Every emotions and reactions will be uh, captured in this particular research that is qualitative. It's full of quality. You don't need to have a, uh, even if it's one or two user, you will have every information of that user. That is quality. And quality is something that you will collect uh, before before going into this qualitative data you will be able to see what are the things happening before in this particular product if you are doing uh, any doing research for any of the product you will find the competitors and what all they all do and how they have managed before and how it was uh, the core problem how was the core problem and how the users got uh, affected how many percentage of the users got affected due to this so everything you will collect in the quantitative data so all this are will be in a kind of uh, graphical manner or a or pie chart manner, whatever it may be, it will be an infographics, you need to present in a proper way uh, to differentiate between both. And coming to this primary research, this is where a real, a real, real interesting part starts. Because um, when I'm starting, you know, I I was literally confused. But for the primary research, I was literally looking on to various things. So I, how to do the user research. I was literally Googling it, how to do the user research and how can I collect the survey forms and how can I send them questions. Questioner, okay, I prepare questionnaires. It should be open-ended or closed-ended. There were so many questions inside me. How to present them? If even though I prop, I wrote a proper questions, how to present them and send it to the user? So it should be in a WhatsApp or a Word document or an Excel sheet. I had I had so many questions inside me. And then how do I collect the survey form? When I'm doing the first uh, portfolio, it was all my confusions. And how to present the user persona? So even though I know every details about it, how to uh, separate each topics. Okay, mostly if I got stuck with some things, I look for inspirations in behind. In that cases, I saw so many people are doing with different various varieties and uh, how they can present it. It was really cool. Then I started doing everything from scratch for like to make it fancy. So in that case, I lost a lot of time in creating a portfolio because uh, we don't have much time when we do research and we do collect all the data, we do design, we do everything but finally you should have to present it in a proper way and listen until it won't reach the proper user because it's if it's not visually appealing no one will have a look and listen until if you are presenting it they will watch your project they will understand your project if anyone is seeing out of their interest it should uh, impress them with the visual things visual hierarchy and uh, visually appealing elements so today I'm going to list a lot of tools that you can use from the start uh, to the end of the research process as well as design process uh, so that your you can save a lot of time and these tools are saving designers life literally I can see that you don't need to go anywhere anywhere else because you know down whatever I'm saying you know down all the links so that you'll be able to easily pick it up whenever you are in need of some user persona some empathy mapping easily you'll get a template so that you just take, you just have to input your uh, collected data inside it or your thoughts inside it that is all it's done if you have more time you are not in rush of course you can do it on your own you can do it in a personal in a proper way if you don't have time you're rushing and you don't need to present it so clumsy you can present in a proper way using these tools so let's get into that now okay let's see one by one uh, for each stages uh, so that you will get to know on which stage you can use which tool it saves a lot of time no so that's why and most importantly most of the tools are fully free and a few of the tools will be free for first 15 days or 30 days so use it wisely first one is understanding
finding the problem discovery stage so where you will be finding the scope of a problem and uh, you have to present some demographics infographics and you have to collect the statistical data and stakeholder interview will be happening so everything you have to present it in a proper way and also how to collect the data so these things like you need some tools for it to make your job so easy the first one is user bit it's an excellent tool for collecting the user insights and uh, analyzing and sharing them with the team so i'll get you through the i'll get you through this website so this is a this helps in making the right decisions for your product this involves it's not just a repository it's it's it helps in ux design stack where you can do the use ux research with the people interview you can take interviews and notes and media files and surveys data and you can also do the audio or video transcriptions as well we have lot other uh, benefits as well in this uh, particular uh, website you can check that and the second one is user interview so in this user interview website this tool helps you to collect all the interview data and also uh, whatever you do with the stakeholders and even advisors so it will help you to connect with the researchers and participants as well it's a world bank open data where you can find a lot of proper informed data so you don't need to go for articles or books if you are confused uh, if you are confused with the uh, normal websites or blogs you can do research on what is the data you need you can type uh, whatever the statistical data you are uh, looking for you can type here and free database and census india same way those three websites are a must visit while looking for a statistical or a, or a proper researcher data and pdf drive pdf drive this website is excellent for finding quickly and downloading the books okay uh, in this free database you have different set of topics you don't need to go here and there for each topic you can search if anything is related to your product you can search directly here and pdf on any subject matter so books are most fantastic tool that we all know Uh, it's a, it's a great source of information and this website is equipped with all the different set of variety books and you can also use a phone recorder or a camera in case of you are doing any sort of user interviews or uh, anything or uh, to observe the user reactions and other things so yeah this is all about for the discovery part and for the defining stage where you have to where you once you found the problem the like scope of the problem you have to define the problem statement in this stage either or a goal whatever it is you have some qualitative and lot of quantitative data with you at least in the from the first stage so remember that these are the two stages when we go back and forth to uh, verify whether the information that we have collected is correct or not so we have to create a list of right questions and ask your users by conducting the user research and personal interviews or sending surveys uh, survey forms it helps to understand the real problem because their statements and insights help us to find the key problem areas of uh, that requires our focus and attention uh, and also finally we create persona customer journey maps empathy map uh, to make it easier uh, for the team members or your co designers to go through the process so we all know google forms it is so easy that you have to write all the questions and you can just share it with whomever you want you will get the response through the mail one and ux persia ux persia is something that this tool helps you to create a great looking persona after getting insights from the users it is free for one user but not accessible for the overall organization and the visual paradigm visual paradigm is a convenient template design where it offers a lot of customer journey map templates you can search a uh, lot of templates that is there it's so attractive if it's it is matching your theme you can grab it and then adobe adobe is one stop solution for all your persona cgm empathy mapping because we can see so many things now you can freely remove your background with adobe you can also your uh, create a logo with adobe traxi it streamlines your following ethnographic research uh, by pre planning and carrying these templates to ensure you gather all the information so here it is and coming to the third thing that is ideate ideate is something where you can generate a lot of ideas uh, you will be in a dream world where you you should be in a dream world to think what are the possibilities and what are the worst ever ideas you will get for the particular product uh, that you are doing for the research because we should not neglect
get uh, any ideas that you get during this stage because you should consider everything finally you will get to know which is correct and which is not so grab all the ideas whomever like discuss with the team carry some brainstorming session whatever it is in addition we often work on storyboards scenarios product illustrations so many things so to understand how the you know, users interact with the product and this process helps us to finalize the uh, information architecture of the task group. the first uh, tool that i suggest is storyboard that uh, because this is one of the best tools to create a quick storyboards with pre designed characters backgrounds and a library of expressions use some of these tips while narrating a story and coming to the very important uh, tool that i always admire how can they do everything in uh, like most most of the things free so this is canva canva is uh, it's a creates a super quick presentation whatever you give the inputs they have all the templates but like you can't mostly find a lot of uh, templates from the user research but for the presentation purpose it uh, plays the best role when you become a pro designer you don't consider these canva and all but when you are a newbie it will be very much useful for you uh, to create presentations and a lot of things because uh, they whatever the templates of presentations you search in canva uh, it creates a very super quick uh, interactive pitch presentations so infographics and posters and whatever you go for you can prefer canva and brainstorming brainstorming this website has various unique ideas it's i think 29 unique ideas so it's effective way to spark and you can check uh, this brainstorming ideas to enhance your brainstorming session and also it will help to improve your Uh, way of conducting the session first make sure that you have a lot of lots of sticky notes and uh, markers to write whatever you get in your mind so and the chart papers are the best companions for you to uh, explore these sessions uh, figma templates will help you in many ways because it's my favorite tool i will tell uh, i will explain a lot of things about it uh, in in, a, in another video uh, you can go to the figma community now and you can search for uh, any of the templates or uh, you if you want any ui kits or ui skills for whatever you may be finally the stages where the product is designed and made ready to uh, to be launched so we often get designers researchers and developers and managers product by everything to get everyone together to discuss about like how we the product like to discuss on the product during this phase we know what we will create by this point but we start building the wireframes prototypes uh, and designing the final looks using the free and powerful softwares we all know uh, i always go with Figma because it's a very good collaboration tool. Because if you are working in a team uh, and working on different, because XT doesn't have live tracking, uh, but this Figma has live tracking. We can be able to see what other people are working in your file. If it's your file or other file, you can see uh, like you, you will get some sort of others or your uh, or your names in the top of the screen. So that if you click on them, you will be able to see what these people are currently working on. It is very good for uh, wireframes as well as high fidelity wireframes prototypes, and it has additional features. just like plugins to read 3d and even uh, you can write codes for your design you will get on uh, some sort of inspect option where you can find all the dimensions of your particular design that you are doing so you guys are where you can see where you can give your uh, sketches every great idea starts with a sketch of course we know but uh, use your ui zard uh, where to scan your sketches and uh, give your proper transform into beautiful designs automatically but i won't suggest this because like, like you can use this for uh, high fidelity wireframes just to present but you are making a real time project i won't suggest this because you have to follow some sort of uh, design system uh, in your uh, company or organization or your team whatever you plan for so you have to make it accordingly this is for just a rough purpose to present someone before like uh, as in a prototyping stage in a in some sort of uh, like a gadget process you can use this and another one is hard jar and here you can see the heat maps to visualize your user behavior and recording see what your users done and incoming feedbacks and the survey like you can uh, you can go through all this if you want it's a usability testing tool that uh, helps you to identify issues in your design you can get heat maps user interaction uh, insights and videos to help you to find the different set of key problems in your design and mocking fish it's a free tool for one year you can use it uh, for ab testing i am giving all the links in the description below if you you can check anything if you want like if any any of the tools that interest you you can check that i have personally used these things so 
I am suggesting you these tools. And that is all about the design tools. I uh, hope this was helpful for you and you can use these tools and uh, make your design process faster. And also, if you know any other tools that improves the designer community, please let me know. I will include that in the community post or comments or somewhere in the description so that you everyone will be able to get the fruit of it. Thanks for watching. Again, I will meet you all in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye. Stop.